welcome to another episode of our 16 Days of Activism podcast. Today, I am joined by Becky and Zindri Masikani. I am so excited to dive into this conversation. We're going to be talking all things gender-based violence. So before we begin, please introduce yourselves and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. My name is Zindri Masigani. I work as a social worker at Nganiyami Children's Village and I'm also a pastor. My husband and I have been involved in the community for quite some time. Thank you for having us. My name is Peggy Masigane. I'm a pastor as well at Open Skies Giver Church, but also been involved at Inganiyami Children's Village for 14 years. 14 years. It's been amazing. And other things that we do in the community is that we're involved in schools. We're involved, um, we started Soccer Academy. It's called CIA Soccer Academy. And um, thank you for having us. Looking forward to our conversation. Awesome. So let's dive right into it. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, Gender-based violence, it should be a thing of the past, right? It's 2023. It shouldn't be something that we are still dealing with. And yet, unfortunately, it is still a really big issue in our society. And I would just love to hear why you guys think that is the case. I'll go, I'll go first. Um, it is said that in 2023, we are still str struggling with um, gender-based violence. Um, but there, and there's so many contributing factors why they're still so such high in, um, in gender-based violence. But maybe if I can highlight one, one of the issues that I've seen working in the community is that uh, poverty is a huge contributor into, into the gender-based violence. Uh, I've seen that if, if, um, if especially males are not working, they're at home, they, they get frustrated to their women, to their wives and things like that. Um, and then it causes it causes those fights and, and, that, and those kind of abuse to start happening in their homes. So I think, um, I think poverty is one of the main uh, contribut contributing factors to the gender-based violence here. Yeah. I would like to add on what Bex is saying, and I do think that um, in our society there is inequality when it comes to male and female, and you would find maybe even if you look back to the history, male we're always the one that we're given opportunity to work. But if you look at our society, a lot of women are not working. And looking at South Africa at this time and the high employment, unemployment is so, it's so high in our country. And a lot of women go to men for shelter, for finances because they're not working. And actually, and, and they don't leave because they're dependent on the men uh, in terms of them providing for them. And um, culturally even, even though we don't talk about it to say that males are superior to the woman, but culturally it is ingrained in a boy child that you are superior to the woman. So they feel like they are more powerful. So they exercise power. They think that they own the woman or they're in control of the woman. And I've seen that in the African culture, I'm not sure whether it is the truth to all other cultures, but that's what I've, I've seen. And I think it's a huge issue. And the reason why we're not seeing any progress um, in 2023 is that all of those systems haven't been changed. It's just that we're doing them in a different way. Yes, I love, I love that, that it's almost like things that have been learned generation to generation and even through culture that is still being poured down, you know, and no one is breaking the cycle, you know. I mean, that's something that we need to start seeing happening. Can I add something? Yes. You know, the, um, we're talking about the abuse and all that that happens. Um, because of poverty and that, but I've also seen when when women learn to to rise up and and take you know and take ownership and leadership, men get intimidated by that, and then they use muscles, they, use, they get physical to control women, and it, it just keeps the, this this cycle of uh, GBVs just keeps going and going because men want to be in control, even if they even if they maybe supposed to just let go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but but that thing of I'm an African man, kind of, it rules them to a point where they start to, hey, now. Yeah, yeah, just to, to add on that it is the fact that um, even as a girl child, you are taught when you get married, there's no option for you to coming back home, whether there's an abuse or what, what is going on, because you're going to bring disgrace to your family. So a lot of women stay not because they don't want to be free to break free, is because it is taught culturally that you actually have to stay with your husband, even though there's abuse going on. So a lot of these women actually stay because 
they've been taught at home that you must stay. That's the that's that's how you should be to respect your husband, to honor them. But obviously, it's so it's just oppression on them. And even if they see it, but because I just have to be loyal and not bring my family name down, then I have to stay in this kind of situation. Wow, I love that. Sure, it's such a good point that these behaviors are taught and they're learned. And that is why we have to do the work yeah. to, to unlearn, you know, these things that have, um, we've been taught for so long. That's amazing. Awesome. So while we're kind of speaking about breaking the cycle and unlearning these things, Becky, I'd love to hear from you as a man. What role do you think you and other men should be playing in ending gender-based violence, especially with regards, you know, we've seen campaigns rise up that speak about hashtag no excuses. Yeah. So yeah, what role do you think men and yourself should be playing in, in ending GBV? Great question. I think number one, we just need to openly talk about this. We, we can't be... Um, us, some of us whole men, you know, like I'm saying, some of us that understand that this is wrong, we need to talk more and more about this, you know, uh, come out and, and speak about it and challenge it. Um, so some of the things that I personally do in my small areas where I'm involved is that I, I, I run soccer academy uh, Mondays and Thursdays. So what I do sometimes on a Thursday is that I sit with, I sit with my boys down there, um, youth and young adults boys, I sit them down. And we talk about, and we talk about respect. We talk about um, going back to the kids and loving them. And we talk about going back to their partners and apologize about maybe not looking after their kids together. You know what I'm saying? I know they're not married, and uh, I know they're not supposed to be maybe whatever staying together. But I do, I do challenge some things in terms of like let's go back and be, and be human being and be people. You know, to our community. I think we need to speak the truth and speak more and more about this because it is wrong and it is destroying our community. Sure, I love what you said about it's okay to be people and to be human because I think sometimes with men, they have like this pressure of being, I need to be strong, I need to be, you know, all the, a provider, all of these things. And then that can, you know, affect the way they think about themselves and women. But I love what you're saying about allowing them to be people, allowing them to be human and taking that pressure off of them, you know, teaching them kindness and respect. That's amazing. I know it's a major, it's a major thing, but I think um, we as individuals in our own spaces, we can, we can slowly bring this whole thing down by, um, by really challenging it, by talking, by, by being open about these kind of conversations in our, in our, in our societies, in our communities. Yes. I love that. Awesome. So I think we can all agree that the end goal for everyone would be to end gender-based violence, right? And for us to be able to unite as man and woman to end this issue. What do you guys think that we can practically do as men and women together to practically bring an end to gender-based violence? I think there's a lot that we can do, but I think first it starts at home where you have a boy child and a girl child and a Obviously, some, um, some homes like to um, identify like the roles in the home and say this is a boy role or this is a girl role. But I think that if we um, just teach the kids that a boy can do this, because a lot of the things that happen is that because a boy child has been raised a certain way to think that a woman, when I get married, I, I get married so that this woman become my maid to do my cleaning and my washing and everything. And we know more and more uh, girls are educated now. They don't want to be doing all of those things. Back in the day, it was fine because the women were not educated. They were not given an opportunity. But even women that aren't educated, they don't have a desire to be cleaning and cook. It doesn't give you any purpose. But we do know that both uh, boys and girls are created um, differently. Boys are more stronger and girls are, 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 are like, I can't say they work, but boys are more are stronger than the girls. So sometimes I think that is used in a wrong way. We do know that as women we are vulnerable, but I think at home when we start to say, I mean, our son Jabulu walks around at this age saying that I'm strong, boys are strong. We say, yes, boys are strong so that they can protect girls, you know? So because uh, he likes to like, just like hit Gracie and we're like, no, listen, 
boys do not have to hit girls. You look after your sister. So that's instilling that kind of mindset at a very young age because it's so difficult to break this stronghold when they're older. But I do think that we can still have those conversations, challenge all of those cultural things that say that men, because they're physically strong or because they have finances that they, they feel like maybe they, they, they have authority over women or whatever the case is. So it's something they can start at home. And we do know that sometimes it's not always a case to have a mom and a dad at home. It can be a mom teaching, but that's why we need a lot of male good role models to parent these boys and to talk about it because it's something that they see. To break this cycle, you need very strong, good character male that are going to model this thing because people learn better by watching something um, model in front of them. Yes, that's incredible. Sure. Yeah, no, she said it well. <laughs> I, I think if I can just add on that is, we, I think we also need to create safe space to have these conversations um, for, for males and females. You know, we, we have to have um, safe spaces to say, okay, we can, let's talk about this. How can we together end this? Because it's, um, it's huge, it's happening, it's, it happens, some, some families we see it, so that it's most families, unfortunately, we don't see it, you know what I'm saying? I think we just need to um, create more spaces and, uh, and have these conversations, not once in a, in a year, end of the year, or, but these conversations must be normal, you know, must happen often so that people can start to talk about this should, if they are going through some of these things. Um, I think that's, that's one way, and, but also as a male and as a, as a father, to my kids and to some other people, I think men needs to stand up more and more because it, 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 I know it happens both, both ways, both sides, but it happens a lot to women. And I think us men, we need to, we need to rise up and, um, and start to challenge these things to each other, but also be, be open to talk about it in public if we need to, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I believe uh, one, one at a time, we'll start to bring this down, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I love that one at a time, one person at a time, one correction at a time, we can begin to end that. And yeah, I just love what you were saying about having good role models, you know, and I, there's this whole idea that we, a lot of young boys are so broken because they lack a father figure or they lack a good male role model. And so even just, you know, beginning to pattern that for ourselves, just being somebody that other people can learn from, um, is also such a good place to start. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being with us today. Thank you for your insights and just sharing your experiences with us. It was really helpful, I know, to me, and hopefully it was helpful to all of you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you took something out of this conversation today, and hopefully this is the first of many of conversations like this, because as we've spoken about, it's through these honest conversations that we can begin to put an end to things like gender-based violence, equality, or whatever it may be. So. Thank you for joining us and we will see you again next time.